Hey everyone, thank you for joining. Uh, today's briefing is on spikes in dominoes. Can darknet tremors predict the next data breach? If you have to leave early, spoiler is yes, they can. All right, so. A little bit of background uh, about myself. Uh, I'm a security researcher by trade, uh, originally university research, and then I went into threat intelligence for the last 20 years. Serial entrepreneur, I've helped build my own startups, some well-known ones like Security Scorecards. And I'm also the founder of Hack Notice, which is the gold standard for data breaches. So we provide to our clients real-time alerting to data breaches worldwide. We let them know about traffic data, about their companies, their, their businesses, their end users. Uh, and we help power some of the world's largest tech companies, banks, healthcare, to fight fraud and protect themselves from data breaches. So we have two key types of data that we collect that's relevant for today's talk. The first is what we call hack notices. So these are really all types of data breaches, security incidents happening worldwide. We get these from hundreds of sources. And one of our key sources is the hackers themselves. So hackers brag about who they break into. So they brag about their ransomware victims. And so we're getting information directly from them and that's important for today's talk because uh, they're letting us know while they're doing the break-in. And so dates are really close to when they actually broke in. We also get traffic data. Traffic data is when hackers share mass quantities of files. They're sharing credentials, PII. What we do is we get the files and we index them very similar to how Google indexes the web. And so you can see how much data is trafficked on various companies. We're going to look at the interplay between those two types of data, the relationship. So we sit in the middle of this life cycle. Hackers breach companies, they steal data, they leak it. It's then trafficked in forms. That traffic data is used as attack data for new attacks, which leads to new breaches. And we've had a lot of clients that ask, well, since you sit in the middle of this life cycle, what can you see? Can you predict who hackers are going to attack, who they're going to breach? Can you predict how the stock market changes? Uh, can you see new trends in hacking and attacking? So we're gonna go over two different data studies today. The first we call spikes. The hypothesis here is that more data is trafficked before, during, and after security events, such as ransomware and data breaches, than otherwise for our company. There's a lot of reasons that we believed this might be true. It's really about how hackers hack they break in with PII, with credentials, with password stuffing, with social engineering attacks. And so we see a lot of that data in the traffic data. And we, we, we have this hypothesis that that information is going to be used to, more, uh, to lead to more attacks, to lead to more breaches. So we did a nine-month study looking specifically at victims of ransomware gangs. So we only looked at, uh, at larger organizations. Uh, we wanted to have enough data on the organizations flowing through the system where we could actually find spikes, increases in records. And so we looked at 110 victims over the course of nine months for this. And that's a statistically significant sample size. That means that any predictions we do on that sample size should carry across all data sets. And we found that uh, one thing to, to note, we, we only looked for big spikes, not, not little tremors of data, big spikes. We looked at uh, an organization that had at least 25 times more data shared on them on a, on a seven day period, just a rolling seven day period. And we found that 71% of the time, an organization has a spike before, during, or after a ransomware event in, in traffic data. So uh, out of those spikes, about 60% of the time, the spikes happen before. Yeah. So if you see a spike in an organization, if they've not yet announced a data breach, there's likely going to be a data breach announcement uh, or, or something to that effect. Um, one victim, unfortunately, they had a spike both before and after their breach. So uh, we, we've seen it on both sides of the event. So going a layer deeper, we, we looked at 110 organizations, that's 29 different ransomware gangs. The gangs can sometimes operate very differently. So we wanted to take a look at, at who are we dealing with on the criminal side. 25% of the time, it's Quap. Quap's very famous for their, their movement breaches, a lot of breaches last year. 14% uh, was Lockbit. We also had a, a significant amount from Akira. 
Um, 75% of all of Quok's victims had a spike, which is slightly above normal. But I want to draw your attention over here. Every single one of these gangs, if you were a victim of them, you had a spike. And so that means that we're starting to be able to profile how these gangs work. And if you're a victim of Cactus, Everest, Hunters, you would expect to see a spike in traffic data based on this study. We also looked based on industry, said, okay, does this have any impact on, on what types of companies are being taxed? Um, you know, we looked and we saw about 11% manufacturing, 19% information technology. This is pretty common for who gets ransomed. A lot of manufacturing companies, IT companies get ransomed. Uh, and the, the percentages were pretty much the same, 75%, 87% for education. But if you are a finance company in this data set, you had a spike. So 100% of these types of companies, they all had spikes in traffic data before, during, or after their data breaches. Let's talk specifics. So I'm not naming names, but let's talk about spikes ahead of time. We saw a big four consulting firm had a spike well before anyone knew they were breached. Uh, international pancake manufacturer, uh, a large airplane manufacturer. Yes, that one. They had a spike in data right before their data breach announcement. Uh, printer, government contractors, pharmaceuticals. These are the businesses that we've seen in the news. And what this study says is that they all had big traffic data spikes before those announcements. Yes. So in conclusion, uh, we found a strong correlation for spikes in traffic data and ransomware events, and that can be predicted. Industry applications. So what can we do with this? This means that you could monitor your third parties for spikes, and if they have a spike, that could be indicative of them being attacked or assumed to be announced breach. You can monitor yourself for a spike. If, if you are not experiencing an increase in attacks, you may want to go and check your sensors because if you have a spike in traffic data, this study says you're going down to spike in attacks. Uh, you could monitor uh, your insurees if you're an insurance company for potential future insurance claims. Uh, or you could monitor for spikes in publicly traded companies to see if they may be having a material event. We're going to get to that in just a second. Uh, also, Hack Notice helps with all of these. We, we provide spike monitoring and learning for you, so you don't have to do it yourselves. We, we help do all the heavy lifting. So the second part of, the, part of this study is, is gonna be pretty interesting. Um, we had a hypothesis that these events, specifically ransomware events and SEC filings, are material events, and those could be, predict, could be used to predict changes in the stock market. That was the question. That was a question we get a lot. Hey, do breaches change publicly trading stocks? Um, the reason we believe it's material event is because the SEC says it's a material event, CISA says it's a material event, and you would expect a stock to change based on material events. I, I, legal disclaimer I have to, I have to show you. I, I'm not your financial advisor. We're about to talk about stocks. This is for entertainment purposes only. Don't trade on this. This is do your own research. Like, don't call the SEC, let's all be cool. All right. all right, so we found some weird stuff when we started looking at publicly traded companies. Uh, we found that before SEC filings and ransomware events, these mysterious red candles started showing up. Uh, the stock prices would drop and they would drop pretty significantly before the announcement. This is unrelated to any fundamental changes in the company. So basically the stock price leading up to the uh, date of the announcement starts dropping. Um, and that's interesting, that's, that's fascinating, but that's not really something that a stock trader can take action on, right? Uh, unless they do ahead of time, which they don't. What we found next, oh yeah, and, um, the biggest red candles were in IT, finance, and retail. So that, that, those were the ones with the biggest bounce. What we found next, though, was fascinating. The stocks always bounced back. So 65% of all the companies that we looked at 
their stocks improved by at least 2% or more from the date of the event. Um, this is for ransomware events, SEC filings, 6Ks, 8Ks. Um, and so, and, and, and some of the variance was different. Like if you looked at the, the most common dates, the localized high after the event, FTC filings had a shorter time frame. It was more like 19 days, ransomware is like 28 days. So there's some variance in, in how these events impacted the stock market, but they always bounce back. So so we said, okay, well that, that sounds like a something we can simulate. So we started a simulator and we started looking for these ransomware events. We started trading based on a hypothetical just for fun strategy and we're already up 84% on the year. So there's a few nuances here. I'm not a stock trader. Uh, we, we avoided small cap, small cap companies acted weird. Uh, we avoided companies that didn't have the mysterious red candles. Um, and this strategy is very much being refined. It's, it's really a one data set strategy. More sophisticated traders would, would look at other stuff. Ridiculous. But the conclusion we found is that yes, ransomware and SEC filings are material events and they can be used for trading strategies hypothetically, but they certainly have an impact on the market in a reliable manner. But we also found that, and this is just my personal opinion, but based on the data, it looks like the stock market doesn't really care about security. And after a data breach within 30 days, they kind of forget. And the fundamentals haven't really changed as the stock risk back then. I'm not allowed to tell you what to do with this information, do your own research. Um, if you're interested in real-time data breaches, traffic data, or talking about any of the underlying data, we're in booth number one. Uh, this is my calendar. We can talk private.